Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Dean Padayag streaming live from Grace Outreach Church here in Boxburg, South Africa. Beloved, wherever you are in the world, we would like to welcome you to our fellowship with the Word of God and with each other today. Thank you for being with us. And for us who are in the church, good morning to each one of you, good morning to each one of us. We are so grateful that we can come in person and fellowship with each other. Thank you again for being part of our Sunday worship service. It is very interesting to know that about 31% of the world's population claim to be Christians. These are the people who believe in one God and the people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord, Savior, and God. Meaning there are so many people, there are so many Christians in the world. Many of them have been on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. They are willing to die to what they believe. They are sharing their faith to others. And they are truly living a Christian, godly life. But there are also others that they claim to be Christians and yet they are very passive. They are just playing by ear. They are very seasonal. Sometimes they are, they are not sure if they are hot or cold. Yet they believe in God. But the question is, how do we know that God really exists? That's our uh, theme this morning. How do we know that God really exists? The atheist or a person who does not believe in God says, prove to me that God exists. They always ask for a proof, isn't it? To which the Christian also would reply, prove to me that he does not exist. So both the atheist and the people who believe in God, we are challenging each other. The other side is asking for a proof, and then the other side is asking for a proof that he uh, does not exist. We hear of people who do not believe in God, and then something happened to them, and then suddenly their lives are totally changed. Maybe you even meet those people that at first they are unbelievers, they don't believe in God, and yet for some reason something happened to them. There are many circumstances involved. Others, they got sick. Others, they went to an accident. Others, they uh, suddenly meet someone that really changed their thinking and changed their perception about God, they become believers and so passionate about Christianity. I'm thinking of a, a brother in America, Lee Strobel. He was a former award-winning legal editor of the Chicago Tribune, a man with a hot temper. And then he was a drunkard and he was really living a life that was so miserable. He was an atheist who got converted to Christianity, and then after that, he resigned from his work. He resigned to become a preacher, an evangelist. That is a real transformation that he experienced. That is a real change, and it is so amazing to really hear. But then you will also hear of people who once Christians, so faithful, they were doing the ministry, and then they truly loved the Lord and His people, but for some reason, something happened in their Christian lives. They started denying their faith. They have forsaken the Lord. And then they loved the world. 
Now, beloved, if there is no God, it doesn't make any difference, isn't it? If you are faithful or not faithful, if you believe in God or do not believe in God, if there is no God, it doesn't make any difference. Both parties, both the atheist and the theist, you know, they get zero. There's nothing. There's no one. There's no God. But then, if there is God, if God is truly in existence, if God is truly alive and He is in existence and He is with us and He is involved in the affairs of our lives, if He is the God, the Creator God, then that changes the entire setup. That makes a lot of difference. Amen? And you know, there are a number of things that we can look at to determine and to know that God really exists. Let's talk first about proof versus evidence. What's the difference? Well, it might surprise you to know that no one can prove that there is God. No one can prove that there is God or no one can prove the, the existence of God. Because when we talk about proof, we are talking of something that we can test, something that we can examine, something that we can observe. But it is important to point out that no one can also disprove the existence of God. No one can prove the existence of God and no one can disprove the existence of God. Again, because the term proof or prove, it implies that you have to investigate, that you have to test, that you have to examine, that you have to observe, especially in the labor laboratory. There is no way, beloved, that we can put God in a test tube. Observe him, experiment on him, duplicate him in a laboratory. And if there is a person like that, he claims to be God, he will not be the God that we know in the Bible. It will be a different God. Because the God, the Jehovah God, the Almighty God, all-knowing God, all-powerful God, he is the God that is God all by himself. You cannot control him, you cannot manipulate him, you cannot uh, vote for him to be God. He is God all by himself. And you cannot put him in a place or in a tissue tube and say, Okay, I will observe if you are indeed God. And then I will make a conclusion later. That's why there's a big difference between proof versus evidence. Yes, we cannot prove the existence of God, but we cannot also disprove the existence of God. But, just because something cannot be observed in a scientific manner, does not mean it does not exist. Again, it is be not because we cannot put God in a tissue that we can conclude right away, that he does not exist. For example, can anyone prove the existence of love? Can you put love in a tissue tube and experiment it and observe it and make a conclusion out of that experiment? No. Because love is invisible. Something that you cannot see, you cannot touch. And there is no way you can prove the existence of love. But most people, if not all, believe in love. Believe that it exists. Why? Because there are so many evidence of its existence. So we are talking about proof and evidence about God. You cannot prove the existence of God. You cannot disprove the existence of God. But there are a lot of evidence that you can see the existence of God. And we'll talk about some of these uh, evidences today. 
While God cannot be proven in a laboratory set up, there is plenty of evidence of his existence. For example, number one, evidence from creation. Evidence from creation. Theologians call this the cosmological evidence. That, that seems to be a very fancy word, right? But it means that evidence for God that we can see from universe. There are a lot of evidence that we can see in the universe that there is God. There is no doubt about it. Cosmos means universe. This is the universe that God created. Romans chapter 1 verse 20, the Bible says, For the invisible things of Him, that's God, from the creation, that's the universe that He created, the cosmos that God created. It says, from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Apostle Paul says, there's a lot of evidence out there. And number one is evidence from the creation. And Apostle Paul says, through the revelation of God, that we can see clearly the evidence that there is God, the existence of God in the cosmos or the universe that He created. Being understood by the things that are made. He says we can understand that there is God so easily and so clearly by the things that are made. The things that He created. The fact that there are creation, there is a creator. Amen? Even his eternal power and Godhead, so that we are without excuse. In Psalms chapter 19, verse 1, Psalmist David says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. You know, just go out sometimes in the evening. Don't be stuck in your house covered with a roof. Go out sometimes and see the stars and the vastness of the stars. Don't you know that there are so many stars in heaven that each one of us in this planet earth can have three trillion stars. Do you understand trillion stars? Three trillion stars, each one of us. Imagine that. That's a lot. And these are the stars that are, that are discovered by the experts. And there are more out there beyond we can discover. That is something, isn't it? Who created them? Is there a human record? Is there any man or woman as brilliant as they are that says, I have created those? No one can claim, for no one have created any of those. But the Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. Amen. A leaf of a plant is more complex than the space shuttle. You know, we went to Houston, Texas during our visit one time, and so many rockets and spaceships there. I mean, you know, the real, the real spaceships. And when, when we went there, we were just fascinated by the amount of cables and wires going through this spaceship from one end to another end. I mean, millions of cables and connections. Yet, a small leaf from a plant, it's more complicated than that space shuttle spaceship there in Houston, Texas. And yet God created the leaf so easily by just speaking. And then the leaf and the plant came. It took so many years for others, uh, for people to create the spaceship. God can just speak and in so quick he can create. Have you watched Geographic Channel? 
you know, that science channel. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, you watch those underwater creation. So amazing. So beautiful. I mean, sometimes they look so different. I don't know if I can call them ugly, but it's just different. Have you seen those fish underwater that it's like, hmm, uh, it's, it's just amazing. You can see that the one who created those uh, is so wise that he can create many varieties. They are not ugly because uh, if you are saying ugly, it means God created ugly things. But God created them in so different way. Varieties uh, that you can see in the water world. And those are amazing, amazing creation of God. Even in the animal kingdom, you know, it, it's amazing, so beautiful. Sometimes uh, our family will be watching uh, Discovery Channel and, and you will see how the animals behave, how animals at work. Um, and sometimes you are just fascinated with all of these uh, things that you can see. The evidence from the world of nature shows that everything had to be created at some point. This amazing creation, someone, somebody, we call God, created them. They did not just come from nowhere. I was watching a video one time of oceans. There are so many oceans in the world, and yet they are not mixing with each other. They are not mixing with each other. And in some places, you can actually see the borderline of these oceans. They are not mixing with each other. Some people said that matter created matter. You know, matter created matter. The question is, who created gravity? Because gravity is not matter. What is matter, by the way? It has weight it has dimension right what else the shape i mean matter is something that you can touch you can see it occupying space right but then who created gravity who created the laws who created emotion feeling who created force who created desire and so on and so forth. And all of this, they are immaterial. That we know they are in ex existence. And yet, they are not made of matter. Someone has created them. And that someone we know is the Lord Jesus Christ. If there is no God who created these things, then we are forced to believe that they created themselves, right? If there is no God who created these things, then this matter, these things we mention, created themselves. Or man created them. Is there a man who can claim and could say, I created force, I created love, I created anger, I created compassion and kindness well no one right these are immaterial part these are not made of matter and yet they are in existence the question is who created these things if scientists believe that matter created matter yet there are immaterial things in existence who created this well we know that God created all things, both material things and immaterial things. Hallelujah. Number two, evidence from design. Evidence from design. We read in the book of Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4, the Bible says, For every house is built by some man. Every house. 
is built by some men. But he that built all things is God. That's very clear. Right? He that built all things, all means all, including the immaterial things that are in existence. The Bible says, he that built all things is God. I think that's very clear. Now, if you are walking in the woods and you can see a house, you know that someone built that house, right? It would be stupid to think like the house just built itself. All right? You, you sound very stupid if you think that way, right? What happened to you at school? <laughs> you might be sleeping. If you see a house, your thinking should not be like, oh, the house built itself. Or the house came from heaven. Or the house just came from nowhere. And for some reason, it's there. You know in your common sense, you can think very easily and understand very quickly that someone built the house. You might not be able to see that someone. You might not be able to see the builder and the carpenter. But you know someone built the house. Now, if you come across with a watch watch all right it doesn't matter the brand lying on the ground you would not think that the watch just happened to form itself with all the elements of the earth right you cannot just think that way that the watch just come together or the things the components of the watch just you know uh, came together and then here's the watch it would be really a stupid thing thing to think that way but we can easily assume that a skilled watch maker created meticulously crafted that fine instruments there is always a creator because of the presence of the creation Amen. And we know that the existence of the universe, the existence of these things that we can touch, we can see, and even the things that are immaterial, we know we are, we are suggesting very strongly the presence of the Creator. The very existence of the orderly universe. You know, in our science lesson, there are many planets, right? And when these planets will realign, there's so many things that will happen to the universe, right? And it is important to understand that our universe is in order. And so someone created it and set it in order. The sun, moon, planets, they rotate and revolve with utmost precision. Or precision, I should say. The seasons come and then they go every year without fail. You cannot say, well, I decide not to have winter this year. Well, you like it or not, the winter will come and it's coming very soon. And then after winter, there's spring. And then there's summer. And then there is fall. And then these seasons, they come. And we are coming without fail. It's amazing, even the birds, the birds, uh, I mean the birds, they have a very small brain, but they follow a system, all right? They know when to migrate to summer, and they have the breeding grounds, and then they also know when to return south during winter time. And when they are flying, they are flying in unity and they are singing. And I believe they are singing praises to God. All of these things are, are powerful evidence that there is God. The existence of design suggests a designer. Amen. 
Now, when you go to a restaurant after this, I think it's nice to have lunch, right? Because we have a board meeting after. But when you go to the restaurant to order a meal, you know that there is a cook there, right? That's someone preparing the food. Because even if you cannot see the cook, you know that there is someone preparing your food. Because otherwise, it would be really stupid <laughs> to think that the food just prepared by itself. You know? The food is like gathering all the ingredients from different parts of the kitchen and then cooking by itself. And then someone just came and delivered it to you. That would be really unscientific, unbiblical, and very stupid to think. Well, we know that there is a creator so evident from the design that we can see. I often use our body, how perfectly designed uh, we are. What if your head, you know, for some reason, a stupid creator put our head down in our feet, right? I mean, you'll be eating dust all the days of your life, right? It would be really funny. And you will look like an alien or a monster for that design. How about, you know, the Creator put your, uh, your feet on top of your shoulder. You know, it's like feet instead of hands. That will really look so funny, isn't it? That's my point. There is a wonderful, beautiful design that we can see even with our bodies. And you can only imagine a designer, a creator that is so wise and really knows what he created. Number three, evidence from the inner yearning of man. The inner yearning, the inner desire, the inner longing of man. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 23. You see, Apostle Paul preached to the religious men of Athens. And when he went to Athens, he pointed out a very powerful uh, proof or evidence of the existence of God from the yearning and the desire of man. In Acts 17 verse 23, the Bible says, for as I pass by, here's Apostle Paul talking, he says, I beheld your devotion, I can see your devotion to God. And he says, I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. You see, in Athens, they had so many gods. Alright? They had so many gods. Gods for anything. And then when Apostle Paul passed by, in one of these sections of this place, there's an altar dedicated to the unknown God. You know, if, if for some reason there is another God that we have forgotten to name or to call, we'll make an altar that is designated for this God. All right? We know this God, we know this God, this God, this God, and then we have so many gods. For some reason, if there is another God that we forget to name and, and recognize, we'll just put an altar there, you know, for this, for this God. So everything is covered. Everyone is having an altar. But the name is the unknown God. And so Apostle Paul says, hey, I know this unknown God. He is unknown to you, but he is well known to me. And so Apostle Paul preached about that unknown God and told them in verse 28, Apostle Paul went on to say, for in him, that's God, that we called unknown, but Apostle Paul called very clearly him in a masculine term, him, and he's referring to God. He says, for in him we live and move and have our being. That's the unknown God that you call. But then I'm 
here to bring the known God, because I know Him, to you. He is the reason why we live, we move, and have our being. A certain also of your own prophet have said, for we are also his offsprings. Apostle Paul recognized that this so-called unknown God to the people of Athens is the real God that he knows. Paul's point was that all men, even the unbelievers, we have some awareness of God. Even if they do not know who he is. You know, even the unbelievers. There is that longing, there is that desire in them. That's why they are even using the name of God in vain. Because even they know that there is God, but then they refuse to recognize him and use his name in vain. As missionaries have traveled to far places of humanity, they find one thing in common. All people have some awareness of the existence of a greater power beyond themselves. You know, in, in Africa, there is that African worship, African spirits, right? And then they offer sacrifices. And in Asia, it's exactly the same. It's amazing, even the Filipinos in the olden days, there is always that offering of animals to a higher being. And in some areas, even in our country, they are still practicing that. And not just, not just in Africa, in Asia, all over the world. There is that, there is that yearning from man that there must be something bigger, more powerful, higher than us. This is because man was created to have fellowship with God. And when that fellowship is not there, it leaves a great void in one's life, which he craves to fill with something. You know, when you're in trouble and you are running out of your own initiative, your own medicine, your own strategy, you are running out of experts, human experts, you resort to what? You resort to prayer. Right? You are praying. You are praying to who? Well, hoping you are praying to God. And we believers, we are praying to the real God. As I often mention, there is a God-sized vacuum in our hearts that only God can fill. There is a God-sized vacuum in our heart that only God can fill. And people try to fill it in with material things. Right? I want to get a big house. I want to buy a big car. I want to have more money and more things. Hoping that I will be happier deep down inside. And then they are not satisfied. Others, they would like to fill it in with fun activities. Let's go to the beach. Let's go to have a party. Let's have, let's have all of these activities that we can think. And yet they are not happy. And others, they are looking for, for relationships. Relationships. They want to have more wives, more girlfriends. I know a president with many wives, right? And yet he is miserable. Solomon was a very wise man. But someone says, I doubt why he was having a lot of wives and concubines if he was indeed wise. Well, that's a joke, okay? <laughs> but... People are trying to use whatever we can to satisfy and to be fulfilled, but then without God, there is that dissatisfaction. You know, Hollywood is a place of beauty, riches, popularity, power, and yet it is also the place of 
drug addiction, depression, divorce, self-pity. You know, and we went to Hollywood. We went to Hollywood. It's like, yeah, this is the place. But it's just like other place. I almost think like it's like, you know, Sun City. Mountains everywhere. But you probably know some celebrities who got married today, last, you know, uh, lasted for one week and then they, they changed partners again. And even in, in the Philippines, you can see celebrities, they are, they are changing partners like changing shoes. And it is going on all over the world. Why is that? Because relationship is being used to replace God and yet relationship is not as big and fulfilling as God. The problem is, it's not the lack of things, but the absence of God. Amen? People may attempt to shut up God or, or shut God out of their lives for decades. But when they face a major crisis in their lives, they usually cry out to God for help. Isn't it true? In, in the time of our depression, in the time of our needs, we know that that is the time that we cry out for help to our God. And I believe that sometimes God allows us to go through all of these things so that we will learn to trust Him have faith in Him and call Him in the times of our needs. Lastly, number four, alternatives to belief in the existence of God. Let us examine what is the alternative of the belief in God or in existence of God. What it's like to believe that there is no God. Let's look at that. Perhaps one of the greatest testimonies to the existence of God is to consider the alternatives. What if there is no God? Alright? Think about it. Because that is the alternative. We believe there is God. The Bible says so. Our experience says so. And we know deep down in our hearts, in our minds, we know that there is God. There is creation, there is a creator, there is a design, there is a designer, there is God. You don't have to doubt it. And we know it through the scriptures by faith, we know that there is God. But then, what if there is no God? Let's consider the alternatives to belief in the existence of God. What if there is no God? What will happen to us? Coming to church... Worshipping God, we are wasting our energy. We should have a party or bride or we should be in a park or in a mall. Enjoying because anyway, we'll die soon. And if there is no God, we are in serious trouble. Hey kids, how fast the, the earth is rotating? Huh? How fast? 1,000? <laughs> I mean, how fast is the rotation of the earth? I mean, very fast, right? We cannot feel it, but the earth is rotating, right? And if it is rotating without one that is observing it and keeping it in the right place, we are in serious trouble, right? We are in serious trouble. Which view really satisfies the soul? Believing that there is an all-wise, all-loving God created or who has created us for a purpose? Or that we are an accident of nature with no real reason of existence? Are you an accident? Have you been in, through an accident? Have you passed by cars who were in accidents? There is no beauty, isn't it? There's no beauty. One time on in one on the way home, we saw a, a, a person and the news says 
that person actually jumped from the bridge to in one across mainland and that person and the body just disintegrates all over the place on the highway there is no beauty in accidents one time we had an accident in california our car was total looks like a terminator movie and there was no beauty there were people shouting at us though it was amazing i, I feel like uh, rambo or uh, sylvester was that uh, arnold schwarzenegger driving that robotic car with all the covers removed and i was driving because we parked it at church and the people on the road ah, yeah 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 they were thinking like we were making a movie and the chinese you know guy is the the actor but we look at the car there was no beauty all the cables were out the cover was uh, removed the car was so exposed all corners bent there was no beauty in that accident beloved the alternative is very ugly very scary it is rather so wonderful to believe there is a creator we are not a result of an accident of nature there is a creator who created us with a purpose we are too beautiful to be coming from an accident or coming from an animal the world is too wonderful wonderfully made to be a result of a big bang again there is no beauty there is no order coming from an accident it is more fulfilling to believe that there is god and he is responsible he is the creator and he loves us so much and he wants to be involved in the affairs of our lives and he is the same god who not only created us but will bring us to a place in heaven our place of residence our abode when it's time to go he is going to spend time with us eternally in heaven psalms 14 verse 1 says the fool has said in his heart there is no god only the fool can say there is no god the Bible is very clear as to the issue of God and the creation. There is no space, there is no chance for doubt. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, I think everyone of us, from the youngest to the oldest, memorized this passage. It says, in the beginning, God, hallelujah, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's plain and simple, easy to believe. Beloved, join us next Sunday as we talk about reasons to believe that Christ rose from the grave. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that we can talk about you as God the Creator, God the Designer, God that is so wise and so beautiful and you're the one who created both the material things and also the immaterial things that are in existence and there is no way that man can claim that he is a creator so many people claim that we are gods and yet they are not the creator God and father we thank you that this morning you have reminded us that as the Bible says God is the creator of all things we can truly agree and just accept it by faith that you are a creator it means you are more powerful than us stronger than us wiser than us and you are more powerful, more beautiful than us. And Father, we are so blessed 
that we know you. For other people, you remain to be a known God. But for us believers, we know you. And Father, I pray that many people will continue to know you. The believers will continue to know you. And also, for those who have not yet met you and know you, use us as your instruments, Lord, so that you will be known to the people. You will be known and people will believe in you and recognize you as their God and Savior who loved them and died for them. Through the Lord Jesus Christ, you paid for their sins. And the Bible says that if we put our trust and faith to the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God who came to die for our sins, was buried and rose again, the Bible says we can be saved and they can be saved regardless of who they are. Father, thank you for you are our God and it is not vain to come to church and worship you in spirit and in truth for you are with us. You are in existence. And the Bible says that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day. In Jesus' name, amen.